In this video, my friends, the mighty wizard shall show you five things that you probably didn't know about Albion Online. And if you did know them, please let me know in the comment section down below how many of them you've already known and what are the new things that you've learned by watching this video. Those are secret things for the most part that the game doesn't show you in any way, shape or form. So you kind of have to discover them by yourself or by receiving the help of the mighty wizard at your service. Let's go and let's showcase those things, chat. So the first thing that the game doesn't show you is the fact that the game has WASD functionality. Now I know a lot of veteran players already know about this, but if you're a new player in the game, you have no idea about this because the game doesn't show you or tell you in any way, shape or form. But yes, look at the way I'm moving right here. Yes, the game does have WASD functionality. The game does actually have WASD functionality and you can open it by going into game settings, controls and key binds. Scroll down a little bit and you shall see right here that you have certain binds for walking up, walking down, left and right. Now, you would have to rebind certain keys, but if you have a mouse with multiple buttons on it, you should have a pretty easy time making that happen. Even though the game does not allow you to bind your mouse keys, there are third-party software that can help you make this mouse button. Instead of being this mouse button, it could be any key on your keyboard, as long as you are not using macros, because that is bannable. So be very careful about that. Now, second thing that I've seen a lot of players asking me about while I'm streaming is how do I open up this map? And what is this map? This is the travel mode map. Again, this is a thing that has been added, I think, two months ago in uh, the Nightfall Abbey patch. It's an amazing thing for traversing the land without having your vision obstructed by a giant map. You can open it both on mobile and on PC and the game doesn't tell you at all about it. This is called the travel map. This is something, again, added a few months ago that allows you to have a transparent map. You can adjust the transparency over here and you can also adjust separately the transparency for the icons. The way I like to keep it up is 30% for the map itself, 100% for the icons. Now, if you are in the open world, you're going to find yourself needing a little bit more brightness or a little bit less transparency, I should say, on the map itself, just so that you can identify things and hidden pathways and stuff like that a little bit easier. Now, you can have this map center on the player or you can have this map just like the normal mini map. A lot of players actually prefer having this as the map that opens whenever you press N. You can be among those players as well. It's very much a fair option. If you are into that the third thing that not a lot of players know about now some veterans players i feel like absolutely know about this but the new players again nobody tells them in the game itself outside of maybe some of their friends or stuff like that but the game does not showcase this and those things are loadouts loadouts are basically giving you the option of saving certain sets so that you have an easier time purchasing it if i want to purchase let's say this set for dual swords i don't have to search manually for hunter hood mercenary jacket and all of those items i can just go over here on the loadout tab right over there select for the loadout that i want let's say i want to go with the uh, i don't know arcane or daybreaker i search for the loadout and i get it on top of me getting this i'm also getting the abilities bound so check this out i'm buying this from the market and i do not have it's uh, right over here right on me first of all it equips automatically and i don't have to equip the spells they're automatically bound to exactly the same spells that i had over here as you can see now for loadouts itself this could actually be a guide on its own so i'm going to try to quickly walk over certain features first of all you can save your gear second of all you can save your uh, ab your abilities and your passives third of all you can change the quality as to not get baited by the prices for example if i go and desperately want to search for a 4.1 masterpiece quality pair of shoes Somebody that wants to troll me, which by the way, there's a lot of players that are selling overpriced items, for example, this 4.1 poison, that's most definitely not worth 81 million silver. I can actually fall for those guys if I'm not paying attention under the loadout screen. That's how most people fall for this. But if you adjust the quality, if the game doesn't find a reasonably priced 4.1 pair of shoes that's excellent quality, you can make it so that it picks a lower quality. And you do that by tweaking this part over here. You can also do the same thing for enchantments and the same thing for tears. On top of that, you can do the opposite and just make them pick from that quality up ahead. So you go at least 4.1 and at most the sky is the limit and it's gonna pick the cheapest version. And last but not least, another thing that not a lot of people knew about loadouts is the fact that upon you dying or killing a player, regardless if it's a death or or um, kill you can actually save the enemy's loadout by clicking this button right here and the loadout will be saved right over here exactly with what the enemy had with the setups 
that's going to make sure that you're not going to get baited by the price. And let me know if you want me to make a little bit more of an in-depth guide for loadouts. There's a lot of interesting features when it comes to this, also when it comes to swapping spells fast and stuff like that, so please let me know. Another thing that I want to show you as an extra thing, you can also create loadouts not only for the armor, you can also create it for the infantry. So for example, if I want to buy tools and I don't feel like searching for every single tool manually, I can have a loadout for tools, search for it, and I just buy it. Straight up, one click away, I get all the tools that I need. Now granted, I need to upgrade this one because I finally reached the rate. But yeah, again, there's a ton of things that can be said about loadouts. Let me know if you want me to make a separate in-depth guide about this. The fourth thing that I want to show you has to do with item powers. It's a pretty complicated subject that I don't fully understand either myself. But I can somewhat explain it to you in a way that I understand it as well and in a way that I feel like you will understand it as well. So, whenever you're fighting an enemy, you see that he has low average item power, yet he does a ton of damage. How is that possible? Well, chances are that the enemy we're talking about has been doing what's called IP baiting. Let me explain. A person has an average item power, but that doesn't mean that every single item does not have an item power itself. So the hood has a specific item power, the jacket has a specific item power, the cape has an item power, and most importantly, the weapon has an item power. So for example, if I wanted to bait you into thinking that I'm a weak enemy, while I'm actually a very strong enemy, what I would do, I would bring the lowest tier gear that's still viable, so tier 4 flat and an 8.3 weapon. My item power with an 8.3 weapon and tier 4 flat gear would be somewhat low you would feel like you could actually manage to kill me. But in the end, I still have an 8.3 weapon that would deal 8.3 damage equivalent. So whenever you're facing an enemy, depending on what you're worried about, for example, maybe an enemy has a tier 4 weapon, but 8.3 sets. He's going to be very tanky and he's not going to do a ton of damage. Or maybe an enemy will have a tier 8.3 weapon, as I've described, and a tier 4 set. Depending on what you're worrying about, so for example, maybe you're worrying about catching a person, if that guy has 8.3 on him, like the set, that's gonna have a ton of HP. Yes, he's not gonna do a ton of damage, but the HP will be top notch. If that guy has an 8.3 weapon, but tier 4 gear, that's gonna do a ton of damage regardless of the fact that he has a uh, tier 4. Now, the equipment itself is still important. I'm not saying that everybody that's going with 8.3 just wastes money, because frankly, that's not what happens. Think of it this way, just, to, just so I can oversimplify it. The weapon deals damage. The armor protects. You want to deal high damage? Bring a high IP weapon. You want to defend yourself? Bring high IP equipment. Now, if you have a high IP weapon and low IP equipment, what that's going to mean is that you, in terms of damage, are going to deal 8.3 damage, but you, in terms of defense, are going to have tier 4 flat defense. So you're going to be very squishy. You're going to have to play very carefully, but the damage will be immense. Uh, that's a strategy that a ton of people in the midst or in the open world are pulling off, making themselves seem weaker than they are. So you kind of need to know about that, and unfortunately the game doesn't tell you at all about that. And last but not least, something very important in my opinion, it's one of the craziest things in the game. Like, I have no idea why the game doesn't tell you about this, but there's a whole city that new players don't know about. That city is called Brazilian, and it's the paradise of solo players. As a solo player that does not play with any groups or with any guilds, getting to Brazilian should be the utmost priority. Because, first of all, Brazilian has access to all the facilities of a normal city. Granted, it's a little bit harder to get here because you do need to meet certain requirements. But don't worry, I've made a very in-depth guide about that as well. Second of all, Brazilian has access to certain red zones that you can absolutely just go in and farm solo dungeons incredibly, incredibly safely. And since the Brazilian market has things that are a little bit more expensive, yes, you're not going to sell a ton of things here, but if you sell them, you're going to sell them for a lot more. Now, the city itself functions as a normal city with a market, with a bank over there, but most importantly, it has an upper layer, because yes, this is a layered city, that allows you infinite access to mists and infinite access to unstable roads portals. This, and to be honest, just for this reason alone, it's worth living in Brazilian as a solo player if you can get behind the bad market, because the market is pretty bad. As you can imagine, this is not a city that everybody has access to from the get-go. This is a city that will require you to farm 50k Brazilian reputation, which is not at all hard to do, as I'm about to show you in this video right here. Before you click away, adventure, please also let me know which one of those five things that I showed you today, or six or seven, I don't even know how many I showed you, you've already known. Tell me in the comment section down below, 
And until then, see you all next time. Watch us play live on twitch.tv slash mockdown. We decided to finally launch Patreon after seeing so many people willing to help us out. So if you want to help us out, if you want to support our content, please consider joining our Patreons by accessing the link in the description down below. It truly helps us out a lot and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. We love you all.